फोर एग्जाम फिर से नंबर नहीं आए ना कोई बात नहीं स्पीकिंग में बार बार रह रहे हैं स्पीकिंग में फिफ्टी भी नहीं ले पा रहे हैं स्पीकिंग बहुत अच्छा है अनडाउटली स्पीकिंग बहुत अच्छा है बहुत अच्छी तरह से बोल रहे हैं तो क्या रीज़न है सो सी दैट इट्स लाइक ए ह्यूमन ईयर्स जैसे हमारे कान होते हैं उसी तरह से इस सॉफ्टवेयर के भी कुछ कान हैं कुछ कुछ फ्रिक्वेंसी को ये ग्रैप कर सकता है सो इफ़ योर वॉइस इज नॉट अप टू दैट पर्टिकुलर फ्रिक्वेंसी सो सो सॉरी आपका स्कोर कभी नहीं आएगा सो फॉर दैट अब क्या करना चाहिए यू कैन डू दैट येस यू हैव टू मैनिपुलेट योर वॉइस आपको थोड़ा सा चेंजेस करना होगा एंड यू कैन गेट अ वेरी गुड स्कोर इन फिलिंग सो फॉर दैट द सेंड मी योर पर्टिकुलर ऑडियो मुझे अपनी ऑडियो भेजिए पूरे पूरे मॉक टेस्ट की और आफ्टर दैट आई विदिस वैल्यूएट कि कहाँ पर क्या आपको करना चाहिए सो आई फील दैट नेक्स्ट एग्जाम यू गेट अ वेरी गुड स्कोर नाइनटीन सिक्सटी टू An English political scientist and journalist by the name of Bernard Prick wrote a short and very polemical and influential little book called In Defense of Politics. And by politics, Crick meant to distinctive type of human activity where conflicts of interests among groups are adjudicated by discussion, persuasion, and debate rather than by force or by fright. In 1962, an English political scientist and journalist by the name of Bernard Prick wrote a short and very polemical and influential little book called In Defense of Politics. And by politics, Crick meant to distinctive type of human activity where conflicts of interests among groups are adjudicated by discussion, persuasion, and debate rather than by force or by fright. Now. the emergence of tropical medicine marked a transition a transformation from something that had preceded it and that i hope won't be confusing but from the middle of the 18th century more or less until the closing decade of the 19th century there had been an older tradition that can be summarized under the label of diseases of the tropics and there were a couple of classic statements of this older tradition one was a work an important work by james lid an 18th century physician who wrote an essay on diseases incidental to Europeans in hot climates and this was built on the experience of Europeans in the West Indies and then there was another work by James Johnson called The Influence of Tropical Climates on European Constitutions built on the experience of Europeans in India Now, the emergence of tropical medicine marked a transition, a transformation from something that had preceded it, and that I hope won't be confusing. But from the middle of the 18th century, more or less, until the closing decade of the 19th century, there had been an older tradition that can be summarized under the label of diseases of the tropics. And there were a couple of classic statements of this older tradition. One was a work, an important work. by James Lid an 18th century physician who wrote an essay on diseases incidental to Europeans in hot climates and this was built on the experience of Europeans in the West Indies and then there was another work by James Johnson called the influence of tropical climates on European constitutions built on the experience of Europeans in India Demand for this exotic fabric eventually created the lucrative trade route now known as the Silk Road, taking silk westward and bringing gold, silver and wool to the east. It was named the Silk Road after its most precious commodity which was considered to be worth more than gold. The Silk Road stretched over 6000 kilometers from eastern China to the Mediterranean Sea, following the Great Wall of China, climbing the Pamir mountain range, crossing modern-day Afghanistan and going on to the Middle East. with a major trading market in Damascus
demand for this exotic fabric eventually created the lucrative trade route now known as the Silk Road, taking silk westward and bringing gold, silver and wool to the east. It was named the Silk Road after its most precious commodity which was considered to be worth more than gold. The Silk Road stretched over 6,000 kilometers from eastern China to the Mediterranean Sea, following the Great Wall of China, climbing the Pamir mountain range, crossing modern-day Afghanistan and going on to the Middle East, with a major trading market in Damascus. To biomedical researchers all over the world, twins offer a precious opportunity to untangle the influence of genes and environment, of nature and nurture. Because identical twins come from a single egg that splits into two, they share virtually the same genetic code. Any differences between them, one twin having younger looking skin, for example, must be due to environmental factors such as less time spent in the sun. To biomedical researchers all over the world, twins offer a precious opportunity to untangle the influence of genes and environment, of nature and nurture. Because identical twins come from a single egg that splits into two, they share virtually the same genetic code. Any differences between them, one twin having younger looking skin, for example, must be due to environmental factors such as less time spent in the sun. Language often seems so skillfully drafted that one can hardly imagine it as anything other than the perfected handiwork of a master craftsman. How else could this instrument make so much out of barely three dozen measly morsels of sound? In themselves, these configurations of mouth, P, F, B, V, T, D, K, G, S, H, A, E and so on, amount to nothing more than a few haphazard spits and splutters, Random noises with no meaning, no ability to express, no power to Language often seems so skillfully drafted that one can hardly imagine it as anything other than the perfected handiwork of a master craftsman. How else could this instrument make so much out of barely three dozen measly morsels of sound? In themselves, these configurations of mouth, P, F, B, V, T, D, K, G, S, H, A, E and so on, amount to nothing more than a few haphazard spits and splutters, random noises with no meaning, no ability to express, no power to Um, I'm responsible for student admissions to the college and I use a computer system to help process student enrollments and to do the timetabling. But it really doesn't suit the way we work these days. It's over 10 years old and although it was fine when it was first introduced, it is just not good enough now. 20 years ago, the college was quite small and we didn't have the number of students and tutors that we have now. There's a lot more data now and it sometimes seems the system has crashed but, in fact, it just takes ages to go from one screen to the next.
Um, I'm responsible for student admissions to the college and I use a computer system to help process student enrollments and to do the timetabling. But it really doesn't suit the way we work these days. It's over 10 years old and although it was fine when it was first introduced, it is just not good enough now. 20 years ago, the college was quite small and we didn't have the number of students and tutors that we have now. There's a lot more data now and it sometimes seems the system has crashed but, in fact, it just takes ages to go from one screen to the next. There are more than 160 known species of chameleons. The main distribution is in Africa and Madagascar, and other tropical regions, although some species are also found in parts of southern Europe and Asia. There are introduced populations in Hawaii and probably in California and Florida too. New species are still discovered quite frequently. Dr. Andrew Marshall, a conservationist from York University, was surveying monkeys in Tanzania when he stumbled across a twig snake in the Megumbre forest which, frightened, coughed up a chameleon and fled. Though a colleague persuaded him not to touch it because of the risk from venom, Marshall suspected it might be a new species. There are more than 160 known species of chameleons. The main distribution is in Africa and Madagascar, and other tropical regions, although some species are also found in parts of southern Europe and Asia. There are introduced populations in Hawaii and probably in California and Florida too. New species are still discovered quite frequently. Dr. Andrew Marshall, a conservationist from York University, was surveying monkeys in Tanzania when he stumbled across a twig snake in the Megumbre forest which, frightened, coughed up a chameleon and fled. Though a colleague persuaded him not to touch it because of the risk from venom, Marshall suspected it might be a new species. One of the drawbacks of staying with the same organization is that the person may get stuck doing the same job year after year. In some cases, this can lead to boredom and disillusionment. Moving from one organization to another can be a strategic decision in order to have variety and acquire a range of skills and experience. The person may be incredibly knowledgeable in a range of fields by working in different organizations. One of the drawbacks of staying with the same organization is that the person may get stuck doing the same job year after year. In some cases, this can lead to boredom and disillusionment. Moving from one organization to another can be a strategic decision in order to have variety and acquire a range of skills and experience. The person may be incredibly knowledgeable in a range of fields by working in different organizations. Using the internet has become a normal part of everyday life for many people. They use it to book airline tickets, or to access news about world events, or to follow the fortunes of their favorite football club. Millions of people across the world belong to social networking groups where they keep in touch with their friends and, if they live away from them, their family. 
In my opinion, these are all good ways to use the internet. Using the internet has become a normal part of everyday life for many people. They use it to book airline tickets, or to access news about world events, or to follow the fortunes of their favorite football club. Millions of people across the world belong to social networking groups where they keep in touch with their friends and, if they live away from them, their family. In my opinion, these are all good ways to use the internet. We don't have any databases on this sort of information. As well as that, these records of sound levels take no account of the fact that people vary in their perceptions of noise so someone like me with years of working in acoustics might be very different from you in that regard. But anyway, even though these noise maps are fairly crude they've been useful in providing information and raising awareness that noise matters, we need to deal with it and so it's a political matter. And that's important we need rules and regulations because noise can cause all sort of problems. Those of you who are city dwellers know that things go on 24 hours a day. We don't have any databases on this sort of information. As well as that, these records of sound levels take no account of the fact that people vary in their perceptions of noise so someone like me with years of working in acoustics might be very different from you in that regard. But anyway, even though these noise maps are fairly crude they've been useful in providing information and raising awareness that noise matters, we need to deal with it and so it's a political matter. And that's important we need rules and regulations because noise can cause all sort of problems. Those of you who are city dwellers know that things go on 24 hours a day. <laughs>